Three. Hi, I'm Mrs. Spradling, and I'm one of the 8th grade science teachers, and we are going to be doing several videos this year, and the first video that we're going to do is going to be on the basic safety equipment that you have in all of your classrooms. Now, all of you may have either Mrs. Robinson or Mr. Mitchell as your science teacher, but all of this equipment is in the same area and location in all of the classrooms. The first thing that you have whenever you walk into the classroom is you have a fire extinguisher. We will be working with flames this year, and so the fire extinguisher is not a toy, and you would be able to pull the pin and aim the stream at the base of the fire. Believe it or not, the best piece of safety equipment um, in case of some type of injury would be the sinks that we have throughout the room. If you were to have chemicals or anything get on your body, simply wash your hands, rinse, and everything should be fine. Um, also, whenever we work with chemicals, it's important to wash your hands after you're finished with the lab because you never know whenever you're going to touch your eyes or your nose and that would cause some irritation and some possible injury. As we move around the room, over towards the front, by the teacher desk, we have the fire blanket. And there will be a time where we do our chemical reaction lab where the fire blanket, it will be necessary for it to be out. And we'll talk more about that later. Remember, safety is not a one-time talk. This is just showing you the equipment that we use should an injury occur. And number two, we'll always talk about safety before the labs as long as they pertain to that particular lab. Above the fire blankets, we have the call button. Oftentimes, the teacher is involved when there's an injury, either helping the students or the teacher may be injured themselves. So it would be important to call for an administrator and send a couple students, one to get a nurse and another to get a neighbor teacher in case an injury should happen. On the other side of the room, we have a single eye wash rinse. This is kind of like the rinse in your kitchen sink at home. You don't have to turn on the water, but should you get something in your eye, don't worry about your contacts. You're going to simply place your head over the rinse and sweep. Notice, yes, water will go everywhere, but we want to save your eye. We're not worried about everything else. Now, when you have an injury to your eye, what typically happens? You tear up, you close your eyes, you can't see, and it's very painful. So let's say Mr. Mitchell, Hi. we're working on a lab, and he gets something in his eye. He's not going to be able to open his eyes Bobby, to get to the eye wash station. So we're going to have to take him, lead him over to the eye wash station, and actually do that for him. Thank you, Mr. Mitchell. Oh. But what are we going to do to prevent that eye injury from happening? In every classroom, we have our goggle cabinet where we'll keep our goggles. So we'll always wear goggles anytime we're dealing with um, glassware, we're heating liquids, or working with chemicals. Inside, the reason we keep them in this goggle cabinet is this is the cootie killer. So after we've worn our goggles, you will be expected to put them back in nice and neat, and then there is a sanitation lever that we run between every class. Now, how do we know what to do with all these chemicals that we're using? We have what's called the material safety data sheets, which tell us how to treat any injuries, whether they be um, on your skin, in your eyes, or even ingested. But we'll talk about making sure that we don't put chemicals or anything in our mouth. Last but not least, if we should get chemicals on our body, or maybe we get chemicals or something in both of our eyes, Back in the science store closet, which is a place that you are not allowed to go unless you have teacher permission. So let's go back here. We've got all of our materials that we use to prep our labs. And we also have back here a shower. Now notice there's one very small drain. So if you were to have the chemicals over your body, you would pull this lever and it would drench you and be able to rinse those chemicals off. If you should get chemicals in both of your eyes and the one eye wash rinse is not sufficient, we also have a double eye wash station where you would lean down and this will allow the water to come out and rinse into both of your eyes. So remember everyone, let's be safe and let's have a great year.